ended up, she had bought it for $16,000. Uh, she was going to rehab it herself. She had rehabbed several properties in the, in the past, uh, but she was getting older, and she had a significant other that was very sick, and so she was taking care of him, and she just couldn't handle it herself, so she decided to sell it. So this is what it looked like when you first, you thought you'd buy it at 15? Yep, so I negotiated it to 18. However, there was a lien on it and uh, for a roof, she had put a deposit down for a roof and they wouldn't give her her money back or release the lien. So, and the, another issue was it didn't have clear title. It had gone through quick claim deeds uh, three or four different times. So it was very difficult to get a uh, clear title. After going a couple of months, she's like, well, I'm just gonna put the new roof on and keep it myself. And I was like, shoot, I'm gonna lose this deal. But nothing I could do, because with the lien on it, she just decided to keep it. She put the new roof on, started to rehab it herself, called me and said, I can't do it. If you want it for 15,000 with the new roof, I'll give it to you. I said, oh yes I do. <laughs> so you estimated $10,000 in repair. Yep, so it was fully, um, so let me paint a picture. I didn't take a whole lot of pictures. I was fairly new in investing when I got this. And I didn't take the picture of the floor, the hole in the floor in the living room. The termite damage, the water damage, the mold. Uh, I had contractors come and they were saying, you don't want to buy this. And I said, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I finally, this, uh, the toilet was in, in the, the tub. That's um, a convenient spot for it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they had started construction, that's um, some new flooring. They had to paint the whole thing. Uh, it was, um, yeah, some miscellaneous repairs. We had the kitchen, uh, bathroom, uh, vanity, and some other things. Electrical rewire, after a tenant moved in, um, there was some issues with electric, so uh, I paid for that out of pocket. Um, the septic probably about six months later went, so that was forty-seven hundred. Um, I got fifteen thousand purchase price from a private lender here at CFRI, and she gave me let me borrow another nine thousand for repairs. So I just had uh, about seven or eight thousand out of my own pocket. Okay. This uh, so. Right where that plug is, like right in front of it, that's where the hole was. That from the living room, you can see the grass and the ground. Uh, we got all new skirting, all new drywall. It made it all pretty. I mean, that's not the yeah. It was like there was a hole like right in front of it. Um, so that's in process, but it was looking a whole lot better. Um, right now, so I, uh, if I went to sell it today, I could probably get around seventy-five thousand for it. Um, I have since bought two more uh, mobile homes on that street, so I own four in the street, and I'm about to close on one on a street over. Uh, yeah, rehab was about seventeen thousand. The rehab took longer than expected, and you have to calculate that because rehabs usually do. You run into problems. Uh, they don't. The contractor doesn't come every day when they say they're going to. You really have to watch what they're doing to make sure that they're on time. Again, I was fairly new and I didn't watch them as close as, uh, I, I didn't get updates as, as good as I should have. Uh, the rent currently is $1,015. Um, I have this professionally managed, so I don't do anything with it. I just take the check uh, every month. It's deposited in my account and I get about $913.50 for maybe $7,000 out of my pocket. Nice return. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it is a two bedroom, one bath. Oh, that's not normally Orlando. Oh. I'm not well, sure about that. You didn't change that slide. <laughs> I'm not sure. Recorder. 
Um, my phone number is at the top, and then my personal email is I pick you. And I am also a mortgage broker, and I am a business member. Um, and that is Tracy at EmpireFI.com. Any questions for Tracy? It's off. I saw it on there, but I can't believe it. Is this in a park where you're paying lot rent, or it said came with land? It includes this the lot. This includes the land. There is no lot rent. There is no HOA. Good question. Mm -hmm. Do you decide to pay your hard money, private money? No, I paid her off from one of my commission checks being a, a lender. Hey Tracy, when, um, when you bought the deal, I believe you said that the lady called you after she put the roof on and said you want it for 15, for 15 with a new roof. Do you, just out of curiosity, do you know how much she paid to put the roof on? It was around 3500 or 4000-ish. Okay. I don't remember specifically, but I know it was under 4000 but over 35. Nice. Congratulations, Tracy. That's a great deal. Yeah. Over here. You had said that your tenant contacted you. So did you have your tenant on the lookout for deals for you? Oh, absolutely. My tenant was my daughter. Ah. <laughs> great job. Any other questions? Insurance. It is not insured. It is 1979. I don't think that was on there. It is 1979. Single wide mobile home, and I am self insuring. Okay, can I get a round of applause for Tracy? <laughs> if you have any deals, oops, if you have a deal or a dud, you get a $25 gift card for coming up here and presenting it. Normally, you can email to our vice president, vice president CFRI.net. He'll send you a template. You fill it all out. You come up here and tell us all about it. And that could be either a deal or a dud. A dud is when you lose money, okay? We learn more from those anyway. Um, our title sponsor is going to come up and take a few minutes and tell you all about it. Get, get um, Elliot up there. He's at the table. Degree. He's got a very interesting outfit for you guys. So do this. When he comes in, everybody just start clapping like really, really loud for him, okay? I'll tell you what. We're introducing Elliot Grind. Some important times to hire a general contractor 
is if you have structural work, if you're taking out walls, especially early in your process, please don't start tearing out walls in these homes without realizing what you're doing and, and what, what needs to be done to do that. If you're changing square footage in a home, you're adding square footage, you're making a garage or room, any of those things can get you in a, in a pretty tight spot if you're not careful. Same, same thing if you're taking like a, car, uh, like a carport, you're making it a bedroom, um, anything like that. The picture I've got on the side there was a house that was so bad that we took the entire roof off. Anything like that you definitely want to hire a general contractor for. A red tag is basically the municipality telling you to stop working and hire a professional that knows what they're doing. That's what they're telling you to do. Um, you can get through a red tag on your own, but if you do, it's going to take you a lot more months to do it yourself than it would to hire a general contractor to do that. Anytime you have a fire damaged property, I, I've happened to have seen a lot of fire damaged homes in my career. There's kind of a pivot point with fire damaged homes where it's burnt and you can fix it, and then two minutes later it's burnt and it needs to just go in a dumpster. So if you don't know the difference and you haven't done a lot of fire damaged properties, please reach out to a general contractor. Don't reach out to a restoration company because they're gonna not know the structural needs that you have. Uh, anything with code violations, same thing. Uh, general contractor can get you out of trouble a lot faster than you can get yourself out of trouble. Window installations, I'm understanding, are starting to be something that the municipalities are really looking into and really making sure that you have a general contractor involved. Um, window installations are probably the biggest way that you're gonna get flagged if you're doing a renovation on a home and you all of a sudden take out all the windows and put all brand new windows in, you can pretty much expect to stop by from the, uh, from the local code enforcement. If you're installing central air in a home, there's a lot of ways to do it. Where you route the AC, it can, you can route it under the house sometimes, you route it through the attic, you end up having to put in soffits, two by fours, all that kind of stuff. It's a good time to get a contractor involved. And then lastly, if you've got three trades working and you've done like less than say five or 10 flips, it's a great time to get a general contractor to come out and organize who does what when. Um, I've seen clients put drywall on top of wiring that wasn't inspected, plumbing that wasn't inspected. So you're taking stuff back off. Again, you're just slowing down your process. So it's kind of like you're trying to cheat past the process, but it actually costs you more money. Some ways to help a contractor, be it a general contractor or just your, your, your you know, person that's helping you do, do the trade. Um, get together and have a good design meeting. Put your phones down, walk through the project, make sure you understand who's doing what. If you're putting an island in the kitchen, is it getting water, is it not getting water? Are you gonna put cabinets here, is the fridge going there? All the important details that down the road you're not climbing, trying to run a water line or an ice line or, or whatever the case may be behind everything. Make sure you communicate in a timely manner. If you're working with your contractor and he reaches out and says, hey, we need to pick the outside paint color of the house and you forget about it and you don't call him back for a week, then all of a sudden you go by the house and it's not painted, imagine that. So make sure that you're helping out as best you can um, anything to do with signing documents, uh, notice of commencements, quotes, estimates. Um, if you send a, if somebody sends you, for instance, two roofing quotes, and they're just in your inbox, they're they're not going to pull the trigger on what roof to put on until you come back and say, hey, let's use this roofing company or let's use that roofing company. So those things are important. If contractors definitely get behind. But it also helps us when you can when you can keep moving us forward. Uh, paying invoices, as much as I talk in other groups about how to manage your contractor, when invoices actually do, don't be that person that's running around like an astronomer, not paying, because then that contractor is a lot more likely to go do other work where they know they're going to get paid. Where if you're you have to be chased around for a week. Obviously, you're gonna you're gonna fall a little lower on the totem pole. If you're supplying materials, don't don't bring everything to site the first day. Uh, ceiling fans, for instance, don't don't bring ceiling fans when the drywall is not up. Don't bring all the flooring in when you haven't even finished demo. Uh, anything like that is just material on site that you're trying to climb around, climb over, 
move, move three times, don't bring appliances. Don't ever bring appliances to a house on a Friday at five o'clock so all the neighbors know there's brand new appliances sitting there. Um, there's a lot of tricks of, of this, but talk to your contractor about when they want things and when they need things. Um, for instance, tile is a real heavy product. You don't want to have to move it twice. So it's a good product to bring in. Hey, you know, the tile guys start Monday. Let's bring the tile Monday morning and have it there ready to go. And having design and color choices ready also helps a lot. Again, if you're, you know, you know you have, if once you buy the house, you should already start deciding what color you're gonna paint the outside, what color you're gonna paint the inside, what color is trim, all those things. The experienced flippers are already, they already probably knew before they bought the house what color they were gonna use, what countertops they were gonna use, all that kind of stuff. So anything like that you can do to help, helps a lot. And be aware that when we start adding changes to things later in the process, I was just talking to somebody out front about like if you decide all of a sudden you want to put a bunch of lighting in the living room after all the drywall is done, like, oh, it's kind of dark in here, let's add some lighting. It's a lot more expensive to add lighting in the living room at the very end than it is when it's in rough end, when there's no wire, when there's no drywall. So those are a couple things you can do to help your contractor and determine when you need to hire a general contractor. Hopefully not once you've been red tagged. Hopefully you make that decision before that. Um, I've got a booth out front tonight. I'd love you to come see me and talk and answer any questions you have. Any questions for Elliot? It's me, you builders. Any questions? I got the shoes at the neon store. Any questions for Elliot? He's done 
dozens of speaking engagement and his resume is so long, I'm gonna let him come on up and speak to us. Please give a round of applause to Mr. Jeffrey Taylor. I have 